Hi everybody, welcome to Thursday night story time, pajama story time. I'm going to ask all the moms to please stay with us because this is a special tribute to you. Sunday is Mother's Day. So tonight we're going to do a Mother's Day pajama story time. All right, you guys ready? Let's clap, clap, a clap, 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 and a clap, and a clap, and a clap, and a clap. Hello everybody, yes indeed, yes indeed, yes indeed. Hello everybody, yes indeed, yes indeed, my darling. Excellent, 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 excellent. All right, now, we love our moms all day, from the morning till night. And I know you can move your finger around in a circle like that. Can you do the other finger too? Oh, good, 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 okay. Now, do you remember where your eyes are? They're, they're here, eyes. And can you give yourselves a hug? And then can you point to me? <gasps> I can point to you. Look at that. All right. You ready for a song? This one's called skid a rink skid a rink a dink a dink skid a rink a do I love you. skid a rink a dink a dink skid a rink a do I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Skid em a rink a dink a dink, skid em a rink a do. I love you. And you, and you, and you. All right. Now I have a very cute story. It's about a kangaroo, a mama kangaroo. Her name is Katie and she has no pocket. She has no pocket, she can't carry her baby. It's a problem. It's called Katie No Pocket, and it's by Houghton Mifflin Company. Big tears rolled down Katie Kangaroo's brown face. Poor Katie was crying because she didn't have a pocket like other mother kangaroos. Freddie was Katie Kangaroo's little boy, and he needed a pocket to ride in. All grown-up kangaroos take awfully big hops, and little kangaroos, like Freddy, get left far behind unless their mothers have nice pockets to carry them in. And poor Katie didn't have any pocket at all. Katie Kangaroo cried and cried, just thinking about it. And Freddy cried too. Then all of a sudden, Katie had a wonderful idea. It was so wonderful, she jumped six feet up in the air. The idea was this. Other animal mothers had children. And they didn't have any pockets. She'd go and ask one of them how they carried their babies. Freddie looked all around to see whom to ask. And Katie looked all around to see too. And what they both saw were two bubbles rising up from the river right beside them. Mrs. Crocodile! said Katie, feeling lots better already. She hasn't any pocket. Let's ask her. A lot of big muddy bubbles came up through the water and... Then Mrs. Crocodile stuck her head up and opened her enormous mouth and smiled. Why, Katie Kangaroo, what can I do for you today? Please, Mrs. Crocodile, I am so sad, said Katie. I have no pocket, and Freddy has to walk wherever we go, and he gets so tired. Oh dear, oh dear, and she started to cry again. The crocodile began to cry too, and then she said, but, but what, what, what can I do? You can tell me how to carry Freddy, said Katie. How do you carry little Catherine Crocodile? Oh, do please tell me. Why, I carry her on my back, of course, said Mrs. Crocodile. She was so surprised that anyone shouldn't know that she forgot to cry anymore. Katie was pleased. She said thank you, and as soon as she got to a good squatting down place, she squatted and said, Now, Freddie, climb on my back. After this, it will be so simple, no trouble at all. But it wasn't simple. In the first place, Freddie could not crawl up onto her back because his knees stuck out. He couldn't hang on because his front legs were too short. And when he did manage to hang on for a few minutes and Katie gave a long hop, he fell off. Bump, bang, with a terrific 
thump. So Katie saw that she couldn't carry her baby on her back. Katie and Freddie sat down again and thought and thought, I know, I'll ask Mrs. Monkey. I'm sure she can help. So Katie and Freddie set off for the forest and very soon they found Mrs. Monkey. She had her young son Jocko with her and Katie Kangaroo hurried so to catch up with him that she was almost out of breath. But finally she managed to squeak, please Mrs. Monkey, how do you carry Jocko? Why? In my arms, of course, said Mrs. Monkey. How else would any sensible animal carry anything? And she whisked away through the trees. Oh dear, said Katie, and a great big tear ran down her long nose. I can't carry anything in these short little arms. Oh dear, she wasn't any help at all. What are we going to do? And she just sat down and cried harder than ever. Poor Freddy. He hated to see his mother cry. So he put his paw to his head and he thought and thought and thought. What about the lion? He asked when Katie stopped crying a little. They don't carry their children. The poor things walk just the way you do, said Katie. There's, there's birds, said Freddy. How do they carry their babies? Birds, said Katie. The mother birds push their children out of the nest and they squawk and shriek and flap their wings about it. Then all at once, Katie Kangaroo stopped crying and looked at Freddy. They do say that the owl knows almost everything, she said slowly. Well then, for goodness sake, let's ask him, said Freddy. They found the owl, the old owl asleep in an old dead tree. And he was cross because he didn't want to be waked up in the middle of the day. But when he saw that Katie was so sad, he came out, blinking and ruffling his feathers and said in a scratchy voice, Well, well, what is it? Speak up and speak loudly. I'm deaf as a post. So Katie stood under the tree and screamed at him, I'm a mother kangaroo, and I haven't a pocket to carry my child in. How shall I carry him? What shall I do? Get a pocket, said the owl, and went to sleep again. Where? cried Katie. Oh, please don't go to sleep before you tell me where. How should I know, said the owl. They sell that sort of thing in the city, I believe. Now kindly go away and let me sleep. The city, said Katie. Of course, and looked at Freddy with a big round eyes. We'll go to the city. Katie was so excited that she almost left Freddie behind as she went leaping over bushes and hopping along the path, singing in a sort of a honey way, a little song she had just made up. Hippity hoppity flippity floppity wasn't it a pity? I didn't know it was to the city I should go. She hopped so fast that Freddie could hardly keep up, but at last they left the woods behind and came to the city. Where there were stores and houses and automobiles, the people all stared and stared at Katie, but she didn't notice it. She was looking for pockets and she saw that almost everybody had them. And then all at once, she saw, she could hardly believe, believe it, a man who seemed to be all pockets. He was simply covered with pockets, big pockets, little pockets, medium-sized pockets. Katie went up to him and laid a paw on his arm. He was a little frightened, but Katie looked at him with her soft brown eyes and said, Please, dear kind man, where does one go to get all those pockets? These pockets, he said. You want to know where I got all these pockets? Why, they just came with the apron, of course. You mean you can really get something to put on with all those pockets already in it? Asked Katie. Sure you can, said the man. I keep my hammer and nails and tools in my pockets, 
but I can get another apron, so I'll give you mine. He took off the apron and dumped it upside down. Out fell a saw, wrench, nails, a hammer, a drill, and lots of other tools. Then the man shook the apron hard and turned it right side up again and hung it around Katie's neck and tied it behind her back. Katie was so pleased and excited and happy that she couldn't speak. She just stood still and looked down at the pockets and smiled and smiled and smiled. By the time a big crowd, by that time, a big crowd had gathered to see what Katie Kangaroo was doing. When they saw how pleased she was, they all smiled too. At last, Katie was able to say thank you to the nice, kind man. And then what do you think she did? She popped Freddy into a very comfortable pocket and she hippity hopped home faster than ever before because, of course, she didn't have to wait for Freddy. And when she got home, what do you think she did? Well, she had so many pockets that she put Freddy into the biggest one of all, then into the next largest, she put little Leon, Leonard Lyon, Thomas Tortoise, just fitted in another pocket. Sometimes she had a baby bird if its mother was busy on a worm hunt. And there was still room for a monkey, a skunk, a rabbit, a raccoon, a lizard, a squirrel, a possum, a turtle, a frog, and a snail. So now... All the animals like Katie's pockets better than any other pockets in the whole forest. And Katie Kangaroo is very happy because now she has more pockets than any mother kangaroo in the world. The end. Did you guys like that one? I hope so. All right. Wasn't she a great mommy? She made, a, made sure she had pockets for everybody now. Well, I have a song and it goes along to bingo and it's called Mommy. So instead of spelling out bingo, we're going to spell out M-O-M-M-Y. And we're going to clap just like we usually do. You ready? I love my mom and she loves me and mommy is her name. Oh, M-O-M-M-Y, 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 and mommy is her name. Oh, I'm going to take away one M. I love my mom and she loves me and mommy is her name. Oh, O-M-M-Y. O M M Y, O M M Y, and mommy is her name. O two claps. I love my mommy and she loves me and mommy is her name. O M M Y, M M Y, M M Y, and mommy is her name. O I love my mom and she loves me and mommy is her name. O three claps. Mom, M Y, M Y. M Y and mommy is her name. Oh, four claps. I love my mom and she loves me and mommy is her name. Oh, why? Why? Why and mommy is her name. Oh, five claps. I love my mom and she loves me and mommy is her name. Oh. And mommy is her name, oh. All right. And one more story. Guess how much I love you. And this one is brought to you by Candlewick Press. Little Nut Brown Hair, who was going to bed, held on tight to Big Nut Brown Hair's very long ears. He wanted to be sure that Big Nut Brown Hair was listening. Guess how much I love you, he said. Oh, I don't think I could guess that, said Big Nut Brown Hair. This much, said Little Nut Brown Hair, stretching out his arms as wide as they could go. Big Nut Brown Hair had even longer arms. But I love you this much, she said. Hmm, that is a lot, thought little nut brown hair. 
I love you as high as I can reach, said little nut brown hair. I love you as high as I can reach, said big nut brown hair. That is very high, thought little nut brown hair. I wish I had arms like that. Then little nut brown hair had a good idea. He tumbled upside down and reached up the tree trunk with his feet. I love you all the way up to my toes, he said. And I love you all the way up to your toes, said Big Nut Brown Hair, swinging him up over her head. <laughs> I love you as high as I can hop, laughed Little Nut Brown Hair, bouncing up and down. But I love you as high as I can hop, smiled Big Nut Brown Hair. And she hopped so high that her ears touched the branches above. That's good hopping, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. I wish I could hop like that. I love you all the way down the lane as far as the river, cried Little Nut Brown Hair. I love you across the river and over the hills, said Big Nut Brown Hair. That's very far, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. He was almost too sleepy to think anymore. Then he looked beyond the thorn bushes, out into the big dark night. Nothing could be farther than the sky. I love you right up to the moon, he said, and closed his eyes. Oh, that's far, said Big Nut Brown Hair. That is very far. Big nut brown hair set a little nut brown hair into his bed of leaves. She leaned over and kissed him good night. Then he lay down close. Then she lay down close by, and whispered with a smile, "I love you right up to the moon, and back." The end. All right, we have one more song. I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. Okay, and this is a, oops, gotta go a little higher, hold on one second guys. All right, this is a game that we used to play when I was a kid, and it's called Mother May I, but I kind of changed it around a little bit. You ready? Mother May I, turn around. Mother May I, touch the ground. Mother May I, reach up high. Mother, may I pretend to fly? Mother, may I touch my nose? Mother, may I touch my toes? Mother, may I pretend to lay on a rug? Mother, may I give you a great big hug? There you go. Hug your moms. Moms, hug them back. All right. Are you guys ready for our good night song? You ready? Put your hands up. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Good night to everybody, and moms, happy Mother's Day. Enjoy.